photography is almost exactly 200 years old. And for about the first 150 of those years, the fundamentals didn't change much. Photography meant exposing some kind of light sensitive material to a scene and then using chemicals to transform that material. From the earliest techniques such as paper negatives, through cyanotype, colloidal negatives, glass plate, gelatin prints and cellulose negatives, it was all based around some kind of chemical reaction. Then digital photography was invented and instead of exposing a light sensitive material to a subject by means of a glass conduit called a lens, we instead began exposing a light sensitive sensor to a subject by means of a glass conduit called a lens. But for all the substantial differences between film and digital photography, from analog to binary, the skills are actually similar and transferable. You need an understanding of light, of composition, of the technicalities of lenses and of how aperture, exposure and ISO combine. And while we've always been able to post-process and alter photographs, whether they were film or digital, in the darkroom or in Photoshop, the starting point was always a camera. Machine learning, generative image systems and so-called AI change all that. We now have imagery that is being called photography that did not originate in a camera. And I strongly believe that this imagery should not be called photography. I strongly believe that we need to map out the photographic boundaries to define where they begin and end, or we risk diluting it and losing precisely what makes it such a powerful medium. That is the point of this video, mapping the boundaries of photography. Welcome to my Post AI Photographer's Manifesto. I absolutely love playing with generative image systems, seeing what services such as Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, DALI, Firefly and Leonardo are capable of is enormous fun. I even pay for a Midjourney subscription. I have absolutely no issue with these systems existing or with the use of their imagery in either hobbyist or commercial environments. And if I did have an issue with them, then so what? Nobody cares. Dry your eyes, princess. What I do have a huge problem with is when the images produced by generative image services are presented as photography. And here's why. Photography is truth Generative imagery is a lie. If you look it up in any dictionary or reputable encyclopedia, photography is always defined in the same way. But I think Wikipedia actually does it best. Photography is the art, application and practice of creating durable images by recording light either electronically by means of an image sensor or chemically by means of a light sensitive material such as photographic film. So just to be crystal clear, unless there is actual recording of photons of light, then it is not a photograph. An image dreamt up by a generative art system, no matter how realistic it looks, is never going to be a photograph because no camera was involved in its creation and no photons of light were recorded. Photographs can only be created by cameras. There are no guarantees when taking a photograph. Quite often they are blown out or too dark or out of focus or badly composed or simply bad. This is photography. Sometimes the weather doesn't work out the way you'd hoped. Sometimes unforeseen events stop you getting the photograph you'd hoped for. 
Sometimes bad timing, poor luck or changed circumstances stand in the way of a quality photograph. And that's okay, that is photography. Computer generated images always turn out okay, even when they're not precisely what their creator wanted. There is no chance, skill or good timing required. The difference between a generative image and a photograph is that photographs are sometimes a failure. They capture the world warts and all and the failures exist to illuminate the great photographs. Those failures are as important, possibly more important, than the great photographs because they signpost the journey. Photographers have always found ways to make up for the limitations of their cameras, most obviously using artificial lights as an alternative to the sun. Bracketing shots and combining them for focus or dynamic range is a brilliant way of dealing with the limitations of cameras. Since the original sources are all photographs, all taken at almost exactly the same time, it seems perfectly acceptable to me to combine those shots and for the resulting merged image to be considered a true photograph. To ensure that an image is sharp from foreground to infinity is a technical decision and creating a focus stack is a great way of going about it. Ditto bracketing exposures to make up for the limitations of the dynamic range on your camera means you can reveal the entire scene, highlights, mids and shadows. Photographs are a record of photons taken at one moment or in an immediate sequence. If you swap out the entire sky, then it becomes a record of photons taken at two entirely different moments in time, probably not even on the same continent. Your photograph is now a merged composite using imagery recorded on separate occasions and it has lost all of its integrity. The end result is that your composite might be beautiful, it might win praise from admirers, but the moment you try to rectify its weaknesses with a fake sky, it stopped being a photograph. If you take a photo and are dissatisfied with the sky, then go out again and again and again. Take photographs until you are happy with the sky. Photography is about not taking the easy route. Photography is dogged perseverance in pursuit of a desired outcome. Perfection is unattainable, but it's nevertheless what we should be aiming for. There are some incredible applications available to photographers, and these can be useful for finessing a photograph. The problem is that these tools can often lead to a photograph looking unnatural. If you push the saturation too far, for instance, the photograph might have more impact but it ceases to be an honest representation of a scene. Bracketing a shot for focus or dynamic range is acceptable because the intent is to realistically convey the scene. But if processing is taken too far and becomes artificial and unrealistic, then you may as well just use a generative image system and be done with it. So however you post process, whether non-destructively in Lightroom or Capture One or destructively in Luminar Neo or Photoshop, the intent should always be to refer back to how the scene looked at the moment you actually pressed that shutter button. Social media has poisoned photography because it transformed it from a showcase into a rat race. Photographs are now only deemed worthy when compared to others, but particularly when it comes to social media, this comparison is not based on any of the core skills of photography. Social media can also cause photographers to covet their peers' work. If they score an impactful image, then it's seen as something to beat. But your peers are not competition. They are not an enemy to be bested. An image they take it's never one that you could have taken. You weren't there with that camera, that lens, that tripod, that knowledge and that skill set. So why does it bother you? 
Although there are famous photography competitions, the pursuit of photography, whether it's as simple as a hobby or an art form, is not a competition. While generative image systems can create impressive looking artworks, they do not know what makes a photographic composition compelling and interesting. It is the photographer's eye trained over many years that understands the complex relationship between color, geometry, light, and crucially, emotion. Any image created by a generative system is simply a faint echo of something else, a fractal interpretation of the millions of original photographs used to build its code. But photographs taken by photographers are wholly original. Even when the subject is familiar or commonplace, they are still unique because their genesis is the instinct of the photographer, not a catalogue of reference images. The photographer's eye cannot be codified or simulated because it is an expression of human spontaneity and creativity. Photographs are not just the click of a shutter button, they are an entire process. Whether you're shooting on film or digitally, every photograph is a journey. It's choosing the subject or location, it's arranging to shoot that subject or location, it's working through the technical aspects of photography, it's picking the right settings and composition, it's taking the shot and then processing it. All of the steps along the way to a photograph contribute to the end result and they do so at a fundamental level that cannot be simulated by a generative system. Quite often the best photographs come about because the photographer was pushing against the limitations of the gear, the location, the time or the circumstances. For example, the idea of creating a sequence of bracketed shots with varied exposures and blending them into a single image is to get around the limited dynamic range of cameras. The best photographs require ingenuity and perseverance. Photographing powerful storms, wildlife, or dangerous real world events can create photographic imagery that a generative system can never replicate. These images would never have come about had the photographer not fought against the constraints of the gear or the environment. Taking cameras into hostile environments such as underwater requires technical know-how and specialised equipment. But the end result makes surmounting those limitations more than worth it. Combine the random and completely unpredictable nature of something like a large breaking wave with specialised camera equipment and a photographer who knows how to use it and the end result is simply impossible to just generate. In many ways, real photographs are like us humans. Flawed, unpredictable, prone to failure, staggeringly varied, simultaneously beautiful and ugly, emotive and inconsistent. Photographs offer up real human connections in a way that a soulless generative image could never emulate because we gain some small unspoken understanding of the photographer by looking at their work. What understanding can you gain from looking at a generative image? There is a spark, an atmosphere, an aura attached to every photograph ever taken by a human. And when we look at the photograph, we can sense some of that spirit. In defining photography, we also define ourselves. We put ourselves both in the frame and beyond its boundaries. Photographs transcend time and place. They are history, they are life, they are truth. This then is my post AI photography manifesto. As generative art systems improve and slowly but surely encroach into every area of our lives, I feel that it's important to erect protective ring fences. There's no need to be so protective about imagery created for professional purposes. For instance, nobody expects a real estate image to be a truthful representation of a building 
we all understand that they swapped the sky out to make it more attractive and saleable. Nobody believes that the burgers in the adverts will look like that in real life. We're all in on the joke. And of course, many of those kinds of images are already CGI. The entire IKEA catalogue is a case in point. But when it comes to artistic photography, documentary photography, landscape, sporting, wildlife, astro, underwater, macro, aerial, street, portrait, and yes, even fashion, integrity is important. We need those ring fences around these kinds of photography because so much of our lives is already simulated, cloned, and faked. We eat processed food created in labs by scientists. We listen to digital music comprised of computer-generated melodies and vocals retuned by computers. We live out fake lives on social media, showcasing a fake narrative based on what we think people want to know about. Fake experts promote fake information for monetary or political gain. We convey our deepest emotions with tiny pictograms called emoji. We holiday in artificial environments designed purposefully to insulate us from the real world. We create stuff in response to an algorithm that tells us what to make, how to make it, and when to share it. Real photographs, the good stuff, it can cut through all of that. From Steve McCurry's Afghan Girl to Brian Duffy's David Bowie, from Robert Kappa's Normandy Beach to Annie Leibovitz's Demi Moore, from Ansel Adams' Moonrise Hernandez to Galen Rao's Split Rock and Cloud. Real photographs are much more than the sum of their parts. Real photographs begin in a viewfinder, but they exist far beyond the frame. Real photographs matter.